We live in a very fast world right now. There's just so much to, to keep up with. My head is full of thoughts. The mind is always busy. We need more and more. We're also tethered to electronic gadgets. We have so multiplied the possibility of distraction. It's hard to relax and, and rest. We need somebody out there encouraging us as a society, as a body of Christ, as a family, to sit still, be quiet, listen to God. And that's what I think contemplative outreach does. Centering prayer is to further the movement into resting in God, interior silence, and surrender. I say, yes, I'm here, and then I just try not to say anything. <laughs> Porque yo, la oración entrante, yo entiendo que uno no la puede hacer como para ver lo que pasa, como una expectativa de que me pasa a mí si yo hago esto. No, es una ofrenda. It is prayer, it is an open, loving of God. Just show up for a meditation, you know, a couple times a day. It's really just sitting quietly with your eyes closed a sacred time that you spend with God. We need silence, and I think that's one big message, is be still and know I'm God. Century in Prayer gave me an actual experience of the divine love that, um, that turned everything around for me. We're consenting to God's presence and action in our life. Twice a day for 20 minutes, enter into this prayer. That's something new, just being silent, especially a verbal person like me. It was hard. <laughs> Contemplative prayer is a way of occupying the mind and transferring it to the heart so that it becomes more heartfulness than mindfulness. It's a practice worthwhile pursuing and being diligent. If I think my schedule's too hectic to practice my centering prayer, then it seems like nothing falls into place. We allow God to transform us. We just show up and God does the rest. Letting go leaves room for new life that prayer bubbles over into the activity of everyday life. Ahora encuentro que soy una persona más abierta, más despierta a todo lo que me rodea. Seeing spirituality as part and parcel of every moment of our lives. For me, it brings back the wonder of life. It's almost like dancing or playing with God. I have something to neutralize the intensity of life that comes up uh, that is not an expression of God's love or presence or action in my life. It's like a little voice in the background that says, pause, wait a minute, where's God here? I am more honest and humble than I was before I began centering prayer. I become able to accept others as they are. Allowing me to come to appreciate the wholeness of other people and feel a kinship for them. A deepening understanding of people who are difficult to understand. I see myself as more patient. In couples counseling, if couples start doing centering prayer together, it's amazing. Y el Señor me ha transformado. Me lo dicen mis hijos, me lo dice mi, mi esposo, mi compañero de vida. Ya tenemos 50 años de casado. Let me tell you how it really has helped me when I get behind the wheel of an automobile. I can miss my vitamins in the morning, but if I miss my prayer in the morning, it's a difficult day. Once you've been touched, it needs to be shared. I facilitate a group on Saturdays, and I see it changing their lives. 
we have a prison ministry, and I really see God gifting these people and gifting us to be part of that ministry. There's 85 chapters in the United States, and there's 24 chapters internationally. With the newsletter and the website, I'm aware of the practitioners all over this world. There's listings of online groups. There's listing of online courses and retreats and workshops. I don't think it's any accident that the birth of contemplative outreach kind of coincides with the birth of the, the World Wide Web. Extensión Contemplativa is the Spanish branch of contemplative outreach. They've made available online courses, it's all in Spanish. The internet has also been a very important way for us to maintain our own unity and, and deepen our own communication, a virtual community. Finalmente, le doy gracias a Dios por 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 haber puesto mi travesía espiritual la extensión contemplativa y formar parte de esta bella y extraordinaria comunidad. In Hong Kong, there's a group that meets regularly. South Africa, England, Ireland, Philippines. And a new group is starting near Beijing. It gives us a global community that I'm experiencing now in an e-course that I'm taking. Contemplative Outreach has nursed me with materials, topics, people, conferences, retreats, um, books, CDs. There's over 800 trained presenters, a large group. It is all that underlying structure that lets our Minnesota Contemplative Chapter function. But it's also knowing that worldwide people are connected. The history of monasticism informs a way that we can choose to live. Praying in the morning and praying in the evening and accepting an awareness of God during the day. I started writing proposals for contemplative outreach around 1970, something for lay people, that lay people could have a spiritual life, a delivery system for the Holy Spirit. We are brothers and sisters in the same process. Father Thomas Keating, Basil Pennington, and William Menninger found a way to share it. We didn't even think of Centering Prayer, it didn't even have a name, so, so the thought arose, challenged by the excellent methods that uh, Eastern spiritual teachers were providing in the West of trying to put this contemplative tradition into a, a method. People had uh, no training whatsoever in the mystical tradition. So I, I wrote books to bring people up to the same page. I was on a retreat in the early 80s with Father Thomas, and he knew that there were people thirsting for silence, and he knew they weren't being fed at the parish level. We kind of sat there and heard this wish that he could have help. And Contemplative Outreach formed in 84. After that experience in New Mexico, Bob Bartel, Mary Rosowski, and I uh, joined in for this Chrysalis House, the live-in community. Mary threw her hat in with these two young hippie contemplatives. <laughs> Kathy McCarthy came. I would go to Gales, and we created the first handbook of all the events that go on in contemplative outreach. It was a laboratory. Thomas was like the theory behind everything and Mary made it happen. Out of her inspiration came the welcoming prayer, uh, a way of doing Lexio Divina in ordinary life, all these practices. And then after 11 years, the chrysalis broke open. We went where we were invited, and it kept on growing. It's really the work of God. I am so grateful for Centering Prayer and Contemplative Outreach, and I feel like I've found a new home. I really believe that Centering Prayer is a pathway back to religion for a lot of people. Open-minded, open-hearted people willingly introduce the prayer to others. 
the value of contemplative outreach is that it provides the structure for this, the how-to. The vision that we have for contemplative outreach is to reach out to the world. Open to all religions and all faiths. As an Army chaplain, centering prayer has been a huge part of helping me to touch that level of our human existence, that common denominator with all, everybody, no matter where they are in the world. It takes us deeper than the differences. Invitarnos a cambiarnos cada uno, y así podremos todos juntos lograr el cambio en el mundo que todos anhelamos y esperamos. The prayer itself will lead to not only better people, but a better world. It started with a little seed, and it fell on good ground. It became a, a mighty tree, and the birds of the air will rest in its branches. And even when Thomas, God bless him, passes from this world, that tree will be there. When you think it's in 44 different countries in 30 years, that's pretty much an indication, I think, that the Spirit really wants contemplative life to bring people closer to God. The contemplative tradition is not going to be lost again in the way that it was. It could really transform the heart of the world, so very hopeful. What would you like to say to the community as they're celebrating their 30th anniversary? Well, uh, the, uh, I can only say what the uh, elders in monasteries have always said, which is persevere, <laughs> meaning keep doing it. And just accept what happens. When you actually consent, you're giving away any control whatsoever over the results of what you're doing.